With over 11,000 cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh! training card game, it's impossible to know every single one of them. With this series, I'll be trying to shed some lights on cards that didn't register on anyone's radar, so let's find Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Unpolished Gems. Hello everyone, Jekyll here and I welcome you to Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Unpolished Gems, a series introducing or reintroducing a certain card and analyzing its possible usage as a tech. With the release of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel and the first competitive season ending, I decided to create a Master Duel special talking about some cheap tech cards in the game. By cheap Cheap, I mean either normal or rares. Please also take into account that usage of those cards can be very niche and situational. Before we start though, remember to like, comment and subscribe if this type of card is to your liking. Now without further ado, let's get started. The first card I'd like to showcase here is Trap Eater, a level 4 Dark Fiend Tutor monster that cannot be normal summon or set, which is quite unfortunate. However, it can be special summon. All you need is to send a face-up trap card your opponent controls to the graveyard. Why am I mentioning this? Well, there's that meta deck that you're going to see on the ladder a lot. You might have heard about it. It's called Eldritch. Not only does Hakuero and Conquistador still count as trap when summoned, but most Eldritch decks also use floodgates like Skill Drain or Imperial Order, which this monster can eat up. So basically, Trap Eater is a specific back row removal in the form of a monster. And that's not all it has going for it. Being level 4 makes it a great asset for any rank 4 toolbox deck as an additional summon and extender. Well, as a tuner, it gives you access to either Hulk Fabrex combos or a Synchro play. However, since this card is actually good in a very, very specific matchup, it might not fit any deck in particular. This is going to be a bit different since I won't be covering one specific card, but four. Those being the Kaijus. Radiant, Gadala, Jizukiru, and Thunder King are all in the rare slot, making them the most accessible Kaijus in the game. I would have talked about the Kaijus in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering special if not for the fact that Interrupted Kaiju Slumber is an ultra rare, making that engine quite expensive to get your hands on. The most useful one of those Kaijus seems to be Gadala, that's due to the burn up and its use to serve barrier statue of the storm winds. Gadala being a wind monster bypasses storm winds stun effect and can easily out that lock. However, the issue with the kaijus comes from the fact that you need your opponent to control a monster for you to tribute. If you're going first, that's not going to be the case, making that piece of spot removal into a brick. Prior to the introduction of Link monsters, token generator cards weren't meta relevant since gold format. That suddenly changed and now most of these are a part of the ban list. And that's where one time passcode comes into play. This normal spell card allows you to summon one level for light cyber token. Since there's no restriction regarding what it can be used for, anything besides Xyz is fair game. The only restriction this card has is that one per turn clause on its activation. Card and effect negation is one of the core aspects of modern Yu-Gi-Oh. You either negate stuff or you lose. However, there's something better than that. It's preventing the activation in the first place. There are a few cards that can do that. One of my favorites, the Buster Blade of the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, is one of those. However, what if a card that prevents an activation is in the form of a spell card, presenting Barkion's Bark and Landoise's Luminous Moth. Both cards have very similar effect that prevent activation of a trap or a monster effect for the remainder of the turn. However, you need to control an Aturia monster in order to activate those cards in the first place. It has a very niche application, but the ability to not care about any of the opponent's hand traps is something very strong. Both of those cards are rares from the denizens of the Sacred Tree Grove secret pack, so accessing them isn't that hard to do, like basically every card in this episode. Parallel Exceed is another extender, one of the better known ones, at least to my knowledge. I wouldn't call it an unpolished gem per se, but still, it's a very interesting tech card for Link decks and it being only of normal rarity makes it extremely accessible. Additionally, due to its own effect, Parallel Exceeds gives you access to rank 4 toolbox, which was one of the biggest in terms of variety in its effects. On top of that, Parallel Exceed is in Stalwart Force Selection Pack. That's another pro for this card since it's not not only in the raw rarity, but also other cards in the pack are valuable and meta relevant. And that's all I have for today. It's a very small Master Duel special, but I think those cards can find a niche in some decks. From this point on, I'll also be including information about the accessibility of cards in Master Duel. This change will apply to both this series and Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering. Anyway, it's time for me to wrap it up. Check all signing out. Peace!